their coming aren't going to be easy. Jesus never pretended, never portrayed, never made that statement to the disciples that it's going to be easy and anybody can do it. The opposite, if you've been with us the last few weeks, and we look to what Jesus said shall be, not might be, could be, but shall be. This is the way it is going to be. Bible would later say in Hebrews that Moses endured. <coughs> what did Moses endure? Well, the way he endured because he saw him that was invisible. Who was he talking about? He looked down through the years to Christ. And by faith he saw that he would come. And that his promises would be true. And God would keep his word. And so in light of that fact, he endured. Endured what? When you think of a pastor and your pastor, you, you need to always remember, never forget, Rob has a lot on his shoulders because he cares about you. Amen. It's more than just himself, but the weight of the church. Your well-being, your relationship with the Lord, how you respond to the moving of the Holy Spirit, coming to the altar, come to Sunday school class, being faithful. Those are all burdens that a true pastor, not a hireling, but a true pastor cares. Amen. Moses would be given the responsibility of 603,550 people. And you know what he would say about them and as he would finish his journey on life, not being permitted to go into the promised land because he lost his temper because of those 603,500 people, 50 people. He would look at them and say from the very beginning, you've been a stiff-necked people and hard-hearted. Did he say that because he didn't love them? No. Moses had proved by his faithfulness. Did you know at one time when God had determined he was going to destroy the whole group? Amen. Moses would stand and say, Lord, if you're going to destroy them, I'll blot my name out also. Amen. And because of Moses' intercession, God would forgive and spare and give those people another chance. But Moses told the truth. They were stiff-necked and they were hard-hearted. And they didn't believe, they didn't trust the Lord, they didn't listen to what he said. And how soon they went a-whoring and how soon they turned from God and forgot God's promise. What God had just done. And one by one, Moses had watched them die off. And 603,548 people later, Moses was still in the saddle. Now, what do you think about that? Moses had done some things, but he remained faithful. All right? How do we endure? Well, Paul tells us by considering Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And we endure by considering him that endured such contradiction of sinners against his own self. Never forget what Jesus suffered, what Jesus went through. Why did he do that? He wasn't doing that because of any ill on his part. He was doing that for you and for I. Everything he suffered was for us. Consider him that done so much for us, lest ye be weird in faith in your own minds. This simply means to think about him. Yeah. And Paul had said also in Hebrews to consider one another. In our Bible study this coming Wednesday night with the grandchildren, their scriptural reading is to be Malachi 3, 16, 17, and 18. I believe that that is where the Spirit of the Lord has the church. There's never been a time when your brothers and sisters, your, the family of God that you're a part of, needs to be encouraged to hang in there, to stand, and to hold fast to the truth. We need to be considering one another. Amen. The end will come quickly. The scriptures tell us. We've been studying in the book of Revelation and our grandchildren with her Bible study. And seven times in the book of Revelation, it uses the term of the phrase 
in one hour. Revelation 18, one hour, such great riches have come to know the judgment on the apostate church. Revelation 17, in one hour, the ten kings that have received no kingdom as yet, but they do for one hour, just a short time. They are elevated, they receive crowns, and they rule for a short time. In one hour, one day, one month, and one year, Revelation 9, a third of humanity, a third of the men of the world were killed by the 200 million man army from China and the kings of the East. One hour, and all of that combined is simply to remind us it's such a short period of time. We're almost finished, we're almost there. The victory's almost won. But that brings us back to what Jesus admonished as we fight the fight and we run the race. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now again, what does that mean? Those that don't quit, those that don't lose heart, those that don't compromise, those that don't give up or give in, but they hold the ground, remain faithful. Because remember, when Jesus does return, those that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. You eliminate any one of the three and you won't be there. God's word's true. But for every condition, there was a promise. If we meet that condition, there's also a grace that we can stand. I thought a lot of Stephen as we finish tonight. Did they kill Stephen? Do you remember Stephen? One of the six chosen full of the Holy Ghost? That would be a witness, one of the early martyrs of the church. He would testify of God's grace to other people they were guilty of killing Jesus. Their fathers were guilty of killing the prophets. They would be so enraged by his message, they would stone Stephen. But the Bible didn't say that Stephen died. Do you remember? What does it actually say? I saw Jesus. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Then what did Stephen do? Do you remember? He closed his eyes and fell asleep. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Do you remember God's grace is sufficient? His strength is made perfect in our weakness. It's not a matter of can we. It's a matter of if we. Because if we choose to endure, to stand for him. God will give us the grace we need to face whatever comes. And face it, we will, and we can. God's always had people like those 12 men, apostles, that were willing to face opposition, to go opposed, to be the few that would remain. The Lord's always had a people, and he always will. The Bible speaks of a remnant, and even in this era, they are. And you're among many of those tonight, people of faith, people that have already made up their mind, people have already made the choice, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Would you stand with us, please, as she's comes.